I'm Gary Stevenson, former trader and people's economist. This is Gary's Economics. And today we're here at Oxford University to talk about the big question everybody's asking. Why are economists always wrong? In 2005, when I was 18, I started studying economics at the London School of Economics. That's one of the top economics universities in the world. I studied economic theory there for three years before going into the city in 2008 when a financial crisis happened. When I was there, our job was to predict when will the economy recover. Now in 2008, we predicted 2009. In 2009, we predicted 2010. In 2010, we predicted 2011. And at the beginning of 2020, last year, we were still predicting a recovery later that year. And it wasn't just the traders in the markets. The economists here at Oxford University were predicting the same thing. So economists all over the world, in all the governments, and at the Bank of England too. Now, this is a really, really big problem, right? Economists are the guys whose job it is to fix economic problems. Now, if we've got an economic problem that keeps getting worse and worse and worse, but these guys constantly think things are about to get better, then they are not gonna fix that problem, right? That means things will continue to get worse for ordinary people. So this is a big problem which we need to address. So we've come here today to Oxford University to address this question. Why is it that economists are always wrong? This is the Oxford University Economics Department. I studied here from 2017 to 2019. Now, when I was here, we had the lecturer teach us a lecture on interest rates, which is exactly the product I traded and made millions of pounds trading because economists all over the world incorrectly predicted a recovery for 10 years in a row. After the lecture, I went up to the lecturer and said, look, can we talk about why it was that economists got this so wrong for so long? And he said to me, like, no, that didn't happen. We always know interest rates were gonna stay low. We knew it would be a long recovery. And, you know, I didn't even really know, know what to say when he said that because, you know, I'd been watching this as a job, you know, for like the previous like six, seven years of my life. I knew he wasn't right. And I said, you know, that's not right. You got it wrong. He didn't believe it. So I said, don't worry, I'll go, I'll send you the data. I sent him the data and he said, oh yeah, that's interesting. But this guy is a professor teaching interest rates at Oxford University. And he doesn't realize that these guys have predicted it incorrectly for 10 years in a row. Like, that is crazy, right? Not only are these guys so bad that their predictions are wrong 10 years in a row, they are so bad that they don't even realise they're bad. They don't realise they've made those wrong predictions. Okay, so why did that happen? All right, in order to illustrate why that happened, I brought in some of the work I did when I was here. Okay, so this is my folder from when I was here at Oxford. And let's look at what a, what a typical economic student does at Oxford University. You can see there, it's a nice page of algebra. We'll go to another page there. There you go, it's a slightly shorter page of algebra. We'll flip through a bit, shall we? There we go, another page of algebra. We'll flip towards the end, more algebra. And you know, I could keep going through this. Algebra, so much so I had to turn the page sideways. Algebra, 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 that's all we're doing here. If you thought that we were talking about the housing crisis, we're not. If you thought we're talking about why your wages don't go up, we're not. If you thought we're talking about why you can't get a good job in the city where you grew up, we're not. All we're doing is algebra, algebra, algebra. Now, I found this very frustrating. And to be honest, I used to get quite angry when I was here. And one of the professors asked me, you know, why are you so angry? And I said, I'm angry because you're not talking about what's happening in people's lives. You know, why are you not talking about the housing crisis? And he said to me, we don't talk about the housing crisis because it's only in London, which is not, by the way. But I said to him, look, the housing crisis is only in London because that's where the jobs are. People have to move to London. That's where the jobs are. And he said, that's not true. I've got a job. This, this guy is a macroeconomics professor at Oxford University. So you're telling me like some guy's lost his job in, in Grimsby or in Wigan or in Stoke or in Cardiff. You're going to turn around to them and say, oh, don't worry. Have you thought about being a macroeconomics professor at Oxford University? Yeah, it's madness and um, it shouldn't be acceptable. So let's talk about how is it that this person thinks it's acceptable to say this. Okay. 
This is Keeble College, Oxford. This was my college when I studied here. This is the kind of place where economics professors and students might come in the evening wearing their bow ties and their capes and have a fancy dinner in a Harry Potter dining hall. Now, the thing you need to know about economics is that it is the least socially diverse of all major subjects in PhD. It has the highest number of students who have parents from privileged backgrounds and the lowest number of students who have parents from ordinary backgrounds. What this means is when these guys make predictions that are incorrect, they are not the ones that get hurt. When house prices go up, that's okay, that's okay because their families own a lot of property. When wages fall, that's okay because their wages don't fall. When inequality goes up, they are the group that is getting richer rather than the big group which is getting poorer. These guys are not affected by the incorrect predictions. But not only that, the fact that they are so separated from ordinary society means they are unable to understand what's happening. In the last 13 years, the main problem has been not enough people spending money. And the economists here, they don't understand why that's happening. Now, I know the people watching understand why that's happening. Ordinary people understand. But when I asked an economist here, what did he say? I said, why are people not spending money? And he said, we don't really know, but we think it's because of an exogenous shock to consumption savings preferences. That's what he said, an exogenous shock to consumption savings preferences. Now, you don't need to understand what that means to know that's nonsense, you know, because I've asked a lot of people why they're not spending and nobody ever said it was because of an exogenous shock to their consumption savings preferences, okay? So, this guy is so disconnected, he cannot even understand why ordinary people don't spend more money. Okay, now, listen, when I worked at Citibank, I was lucky enough to work with a fantastically intelligent trader who didn't go to university. He just came from an ordinary background in Liverpool and worked his way up to the top, which you can't really do now. When I worked with him, I used to bring my textbooks in to study economics to try and understand what was happening. And one day he came over, he just took those textbooks and he threw them in a bin. And he said, Gary, look, if you want to understand the economy, go and talk to your parents, talk to your friends and their families, understand their economic situation, ask what's happening to them. Walk down the high street, see what shops are closing down, see if there's more homelessness. You know, look at the adverts on the tube and on the street. That is going to teach you what is happening in the economy, all right? Everybody watching this video, I want you to understand, you are the economy. Your family is the economy. Your communities are the economy. Your economic problems are the economic problems. And those are the things that people here should be talking about. But look around here. Yeah? Do you think those are the things that these people are worried about? They're not. Because when inequality increases, those people get richer. Their lives don't get worse. They don't get better. So they can predict wrong as much as they like. They've still got comfortable lives, they're still getting paid, their families and communities are still doing perfectly well. The economists here don't understand why people aren't spending money. But I understand, and you understand. We understand because we are ordinary people from ordinary families, and we know what's happening. These guys don't understand because they're not. Ordinary people from ordinary families are not spending more money because they are not getting any more money, because that money is flowing to the rich. And these guys here, wearing their bow ties and teaching in castles, are not going to help us. And a chancellor who is a billionaire is not going to help us. And a prime minister who is a multimillionaire is not going to help us. We have to help us. We have to make it happen. And the way we do that is by educating ourselves and each other about economics. By teaching each other that the key thing we need to fix is wealth inequality. By teaching each other that if we don't fix wealth inequality, things are not going to get better, but will get worse. But that if we do fix it, things can get so much better for all of us. So please, go watch What is Wealth. Educate yourselves, teach your friends, teach your family. Tell them what's happening. The only way we are going to get better lives for ordinary families is by fixing wealth inequality. So tell each other what's happening. Anyway, it's nearly time for dinner, so I've got to go put my bow tie on, yeah? Keep watching. But poorer families will be forced to lose almost all of their assets, including their home. We have a tax system which is very efficient at taxing ordinary working people, but very inefficient at taxing the super rich.